is the original photograph that I worked from. And here is that cropped photo that we talked about in the last lesson. Notice that the focal point is on the intersection of the trees and the shadows right at that one-third join line that we talked about last time. Here's the thumbnail study that I did from that photograph. And I want you to pay particular attention to the way that I related the forms and the shapes in the thumbnail study to the edge of the page. And that the box that I drew the thumbnail in is in the same proportion as the cropped photograph. So it's very important that you keep your thumbnails in proportion to the final image that you want to work on. The painting study that I'm doing today is on canvas from pre gessoed canvas off of a roll that has been cut to around five by seven inches and then taped to a piece of foam core board with masking tape. It's a real flexible surface to work on, one that is easy, uh, not very expensive, so it's not so precious if it's bad, ruined, messed up when you're done. You can simply toss it away, although I strongly urge you not to toss anything that you do during the, the process of the course so that you can see progress from the beginning to the end. You'll be surprised at what a difference it makes when you are working consistently over a period of time and how much change you'll see in your work. So hold on to everything that you do just so that you can see that progress. And I challenge everybody to do more than one of these for this exercise. The more you do, the better you will get. So we're not going to concentrate on doing finished paintings yet. We're going to concentrate on creating a number of studies from the same basic sources. You can work from that exact same photograph and see how many studies you can get from one image. Or you can work from multiple photographs if that inspires you more. Either way, let's jump in and get started with painting. So the first thing we're going to do is mix three values of each color. We've got lots of noise because I'm outside and it's an urban area so we're going to have trains and lawnmowers and all of that but I can probably strip those out later. So you want a middle gray value. This is a little too light so what I'm going to do, notice I'm wiping the knife in between mixing. Wiping the knife keeps the paint from getting messed up. It's one of the advantages of using this flat knife for mixing is it's very easy to then control how much you get into that paint. So there we have a middle gray. So now we've got three values. We're actually going to paint with this knife as well as mix with it. So we have those three values we're going to work with. I'm going to tilt the camera up and we're going to start working on our canvas, piece of gesso canvas. So I'm going to be working from a thumbnail sketch that I did from that image that you saw earlier. So here's the thumbnail sketch and we're going to be working on that as we complete this brief study. What I want us to do is to literally paint the thumbnail study rather than the photograph that you worked from. I want us to concentrate on simple values. So remember that mantra that I talked about in the first video. Three to five values, five to seven shapes. That's the thumbnail. So you want to simplify, simplify, simplify. You can make it more complex later. But if you start out now with it fairly simple, then you can develop that complexity and you can make those choices along the way. So let's dive in. Notice I'm putting small dots of color on. I'm figuring out where basic elements are going to go and I'm orienting things towards those thirds that I talked about earlier.
So quickly establish the main elements. Now this is roughly one third in and that's where that main tree is going to be and where it intersects. These are where those main shadows are going to be. Then from this point on I'm going to begin working purely with the masses and do a whole lot less of what appears at first glance to be drawing. So comparing one value against another. Start with the darks because it's very hard to darken up after you've already gotten lighter. So you want to mass in those darks to begin with. And one reason I want you to work with that knife is that it's going to keep you from getting what I call inicky finicky. You cannot get too caught up in details because the knife's not going to let you at this stage of the game unless you've used it a lot before. You're not going to be able to get too tight in there and worried about too many details. You notice I'm working on pre-gessoed canvas that I bought on a roll. It's very easy to cut it to whatever size you want to work with. And this is mounted on a piece of foam core with just masking tape. Keeps it from being too precious. So again, I'm just blocking in that darkest dart right now as quickly as I can. and being mosquito meat. Uh, there's a reason why we're working outside. The light outside is very different than the light inside. And even if you're working from a photograph, working outside will begin to get you used to working from direct observation, which is our end goal. So take your stuff outside if you can. If, you're, if you can't, then get as much natural light as you can. It'll make a big difference in what you see. Then my trees are fairly dark. I obviously need to tighten that back up again. Remember this is a study or a sketch. It is not the next thing next to Leonardo, so don't become too precious with it. Keep it loose. Don't worry about coloring in. You don't have to fill in the whole canvas. If something goes where it's not supposed to be, that, like that little bit of black there, it can be removed later and covered up. It's not anything to be concerned about. They're the darkest darks. And then we're going to go to the middle grays. At this point, I want to correct that shape a little bit. If 
it got a little too big and it's really easy to do with paint much easier than with that pencil or even with a marker and this mass in the background is the those are the trees that are in the distance they're not far distance but in the distance and notice that I've got that top point of that tree lining up again with that one-third line here's the one-third here's the one-third here's the one-third here's the one-third and don't worry about going around those thinner lines you can put them back in do not paint around it takes too long and it's very easy to put them back in that actually needs to be lighter right there so there is the lighter part of that Panel's having a hard time not coming loose. And I'm going to mix myself a little bit of one that's in between so that I'll end up with four values instead of just five. So I need a really nice light gray. There we go. See, I'm visually trying to put it halfway in between the white and the middle gray. So mix it till it looks like it's about halfway. And that is this gray that goes back up here. Don't worry if your painting looks like a hot mess as you're working because you're going to tighten it up after you get it on there. Where people make a big mistake is they try to make it tight from the beginning and you don't have anywhere to go if you do that. Much better to tighten it up as you go. I want to lighten that up a little bit so I can go in there and it picked up some of the black. See I want that to be a definite distinct difference in value right there. So if it's picked up some of the black, I can go in and mix it so that it goes light again. But the more you go over it, the darker it's going to get, no matter what medium you're working in. So try to keep it clean. Make a mark and leave it. Make a mark and leave it. Make a mark and leave it. Don't keep going over it. Mark and leave it. It's really important getting that habit. We'll keep it fresher. So these are the shadows 
on the snow. And they help tie the whole thing together. They're a visual anchor. Remember I said we're going to pull those blacks back out again, so don't worry about them right now. Make the mark and leave it. Now you could leave the white of the canvas on there if you wanted to, but I like to get the paint on there so they get a little bit more of the physicality of it. It also gives me something to blend and manipulate those edges with because I'm going to come back in there and finesse some of those edges to make the shapes a little bit less abstract. Remember, we're not trying to make a great work of art. We're trying to capture values very quickly. This is a study, not a great finished piece. So don't make it precious. Work out those value relationships. You know, it's going to run out of paint. That doesn't work super well. So again, keep remembering to wipe that knife multiple times. I like to use a half a paper towel for some reason. It's one of my idiosyncrasies. It's a little easier to handle and you don't waste as much of it. So see how you're kind of carving back in. If you need to remove paint, you can go across it like that and take off some if it's getting too thick. Don't be afraid of wasting paint. Much better off putting the paint on. What I'm trying to capture here are some of these angles that I see. Remember, we're just getting the paint on there right now, and then we can manipulate it a little bit. It's 
So then I can come back and pull back in some of those darks. You can do it by going through that way, or you can do it by pushing up and removing some of the gray that's on there. It's a good idea to do that before you start trying to lay a black in on top of it. So take some paint off before you put paint on. This should look abstracted. We're trying to capture that underlying structure. It's a road map in values. It can be developed into something more realistic, but for what we were working on this time, I want you to go more abstracted. Abstraction is a sliding scale that goes all the way from representation to non-objective. It's not a singular, singular thing or an object. So in those areas where I want to darken up a little bit, I can pull some out. And I can come back in and add some more darks. Fuss with the edges just a little bit. Don't fuss with them too much or they'll all blend together. We all have a tendency to do too much. Try to do a little less. Less is more sometimes. So on these early ones, keep them as simple as you can force yourself to be. And that is a thumbnail value study of that particular scene. Again, remember, it's not supposed to look like a photograph or be hyper-representational because we're looking at the structure, not the individual components. So keep it loose. Resist the temptation to overwork it. Don't go back in and play with it too much. I want some of these edges to stay hard so you can see where those value changes are. So that's our first painting exercise. I want you to try this on your own. If you'd like, you can work from the same composition or you can develop one of your own. Either way is fine. But make an attempt at one. Even better if you can do two or three. The more you do, the better um, it, you will get and the easier the whole process gets. Thanks once again for joining in and I look forward to our next session.